Hello again, welcome back to another video. Uh, thank you to uh, all of you who watched the last video, my confession video about shooting uh, digital as well as analog. Um, 2,000 views, I don't know what quite went on there. Um, 1,000 views for two days and then nothing, so I don't know what was going on with that one. Strange. Anyway, today we're back with the film camera. This is the Pentax MV, as you can see it's quite a nice little small, relatively light, 420 grams, something like that. It's not a particularly heavy camera. Quite a lot of use of plastic, plastic top, plastic bottom. And I believe I read somewhere these are actually made in China, not in Japan, because it does not say on it made in Japan. It just has Asahi Optical Co. Japan on it. So I think it's probably right that it was made in China. This replaced the, uh, the MX about the same time as the ME got kind of replaced by the ME Super, so we're talking 1979. This was only around for a year. Um, they took this away in 1980 and introduced the MV1. And there's a very good reason for that. Um, in the reviews at the time when it was launched, people complained about the mirror slap. Um, apparently, because it is so lightweight and quite a flimsy design inside, there's a noticeable mirror slap on these and it caused problems with uh, blurred images. So uh, you need to bear that in mind. I don't think it's a, a serious problem, but I think it's something you need to think about. But yeah, Pentax only made these for a year. They were only available in the black finish. There was no chrome version of these. Came out, so any Pentax lens or Pentax came out lens will fit on it. Um, it uses the M series, it doesn't need the A series because there's no program on this. It is an aperture priority automatic camera. So you select the aperture that you want and the camera will work out the corresponding shutter speed. And they run from one second to a thousandth and they're stepless. The downside being in the viewfinder, it doesn't show you the shutter speed that the camera has selected. It either shows you a green LED, which means it should be okay to take a picture, or a amber, orangey sort of LED, which warns you about camera shake. Because the camera doesn't know what focal length lens you've got on the camera, I don't know what it was set up for, whether it was designed around a 50mm lens or a 300mm lens. So there's a degree of uncertainty with this camera regarding uh, shake from the mirror. Uh, but in the newer version, the MV1, that issue was addressed and that issue kind of disappeared. So these are quite rare, but being rare doesn't mean that something is desirable or valuable. You see a lot of adverts on eBay where people put rare in the, in, in the description. And usually it's a seller trying to con you into paying over the odds for something. Do your research. You know, is, it, is it really rare and is it really desirable? And, the, you know, is it really wanted and are people paying a lot of money for it? Because don't get suckered into buying something just because it's rare, thinking, oh, you know, I've got myself a good one here. Anyway, standard layout. Film advance lever. Sticks out a little bit, which is quite nice. Frame counter on the top. You've got your shutter release in the middle here, which is threaded for a cable release. And then you've got this dial. You can see there's only auto, which is, as I said, aperture priority. 100x, which is the flash sync speed of 100. And I believe that's a manual speed as well. And B for bulb, of course. Hot shoe on the top. There is a dedicated flash connection on there. And that's an X connection. So that's for electronic flash. There is no PC connection on the camera. In fact, it's very sparse on features. There's no self-timer. There's no depth of field preview. Uh, there's no reminder tab on the back. Very, very basic. ASA, which is now ISO, goes from 32, so not particularly low, all the way up to 1600, not particularly high, but it's enough to cover most normal film usage. And pull up, rewind, crank, which I don't think is original because this doesn't fog away correctly. This should be going flush with the camera, I think. So I think there's been some jiggery pokery going on over there before I got it. This dial underneath here, forget about it. It's designed for exposure compensation, but it's a stupid idea because you've got to lift this collar up to find it. And the danger of doing that and ruining your film 
it's just a stupid idea so don't bother with the dial that's underneath that pressure plate that's metal backs metal multi-slotted take-up spool so it should make loading easier again all plastic plastic sprocket drive this part's metal vertical traveling seiko shutter electronically controlled so that should be fairly good and reliable and that's where your film cassette goes on this side manual rewind when you're finished pushing the button at the bottom to disconnect the sprocket drive and then that should turn backwards if you push it in properly that should go backwards maybe you've got to hold it in some cameras you've got to hold it in yeah if you hold it in it goes so yeah you've got to hold it in for it to rewind that's a pain check the light seals if you do come across one I wouldn't put it on your wish list to go out looking for one unless you're a oh, focus, a mad collector like me who wants all of them. But um, if you get given one or find one for very, very cheap, I mean, you can buy these in the UK, they're about £20, so that they're not expensive just for the body. The lens is probably going to cost you the same again. There are better options out there, really, than these. Sounds like I'm being a bit of a downer on it. It's quite a nice little camera. Um, it's one of those sort of, it's like a point and shoot that you can change the lenses on. And you do have some control over it because you can select the aperture. You can alter the ISO for over and under exposure if you wanted to. You know, it's just a matter of stops. But yeah, they're not bad, I don't think. It runs off the usual two um, SR44s or LR44s in the base. Tripod bush, which is in the centre of the lens mount, which is the right place for it to be. But yeah, there is. Uh, it's a cheap, easy to use camera. Someone who's not wanting to be too technical. Comes before the age of program, so there's no program mode on it. So it is. Choose the aperture. The lens is quite nice because it does have half stops on it as well. So um, you can get half stops on the lens. You know, focus. There yeah, you go. And Pentax are famous for their lenses. They're really smooth and buttery. So they are nice lenses. Loads of Pentax PK fitting lenses around. Ricoh also used the same mount. I think Casina did as well, actually. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of, make, uh, of, um, of lenses that will fit these cameras. Uh, the Pentax ones aren't particularly expensive, to be honest. Pentax isn't the force it once was. Anyway, that's the camera for today, folks. A quick review. I've been out shooting. I finished off the, uh, the Shanghai 220 roll. I got 31 exposures on it, which is quite a bonus. Um, so, yeah, I'll get that developed and come back to you with uh, my thoughts and opinions and some sample shots to see what we think of Shanghai GP3. Thank you very much for watching. Comments, questions, queries, etc. down the bottom as usual. And... Uh, Please think about liking and subscribing and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care and bye.